find varieties, any? Nah, I didn't get Sorry, it. Sorry, is Rosé not a variety? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Another week of blind wine tastings. We've got another six fun wines to try. I mean, I don't know if they're good yet. They're blind, that's the point of it. But we've got another six wines to try either way. Because Amanda did such a stellar job last week, we're keeping her on. Brendan, you're staying on the bench, mate. Big thanks as always to Sometimes Always for hooking us up with a 10% off discount for all of our loyal watchers out there. If you want to gain access to that one, what you need to do is just click down below. There's a link to our Discord server. That's got the link for the 10% off at Sometimes Always. It's what I always use to buy the wines, so get amongst it. Let's get into it. Alrighty then, let's try some more wine. Blind. All right, let's get into it. Wine one. Literally every time I pick up a glass and it's this color, I assume it's Chardonnay. It's got like a bit of a honeyed, ripe peach kind of character to it, but not much is screaming at me. When I first smelled it initially, I couldn't really get much off the nose. Like it's really muted. Um, on the palate, there's some acidity. It smells a lot more citrusy than it is to, uh, in terms of on the palate to me. There's nothing about it that gets me particularly excited, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's a pretty just like straight up and down little wine, to be honest. Really don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm really not sure what it is actually, to be honest. Could be like a Gruner, maybe like. There's almost like, it's probably not tannin. I don't know if you can have tannin in white wines. Let's find out, question mark. Tannin in whites. Like, it's not really much oak on it. So maybe not too expensive, like 35 bottle. I'd grab a bottle of it. I'd be happy to share it with someone. Um, I wouldn't want to pay more than $30. If it's more than $30, I'd be quite disappointed. I'd like to drink that if I just got out of a pool. It's got this sort of almost like on the real back of the palate after you've swallowed, it just kicks back up a little bit. It's not bad by any means, but compared to some of the other ones that we've tried on here, it's just not screaming at me by me. One number two. Red. Really subdued though, like really light, kind of um, musty in a good way though, like kind of like a really old closet. Oh wow, it's got an awesome little like savory olivey thing to it, but it's nice and herbal. I'm into it though. It's not really aggressive. It doesn't fight you on the way down as some of the larger reds do. And just like really lightly floral and then it's just tannic, like it's beautiful weighted fine grained tannins across it, but then like really chewy up front. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely neb. I reckon this is probably around the, the fitty bone mark, and it's well worthy of that price point. Quite got... often with these wines specifically, like the larger reds that I try, I'm really one way or the other on them. I either really am into them because it's done something for me, or I'm really like, poor. This is real middle of the road, which makes it somewhat more impressive than the other two because it's a little bit rare. Lovely mix of like red berries and black fruits, and there's that kind of like cool briny olive thing going on. There's an awesome structure to it. It's like really nice and furry, and, but also there's this like underlying silkiness to it that I find really exciting. This is actually a fantastic wine. I'm really into this. Alrighty, number three, pretty dark. If that one smells like the cologne of a man who wears bathrobes, this smells like the perfume of the woman he's chasing. This is cool. This wine's cooked. I'm pretty sure. Maybe I'm just having a really off day, but actually, can you give that to Noah? Let's have a look. I'll go. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon this wine's corked. Corked? It's just really flat, like flat line. Well, there's heaps in the palate, but just the nose is fucked. You, you think it's for you? Maybe I'd say I'd there. say just play on. It's pretty yummy, full disclosure. It's yeah. pretty yummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. It's just yeah, the nose is really it was whacked. I'm trying to avoid calling everything cherry, so what that actually tastes like is like a stewed apple or something along those lines. No idea about the region. In terms of price, I'm gonna go $45. And I'd like six of them. They're very cool. It's juicy, spicy. Ooh, spicy. It's not, you know, the one that's jumped out and really grabbed me by the throat and said, buy me, but it's definitely winking at me from across the bar. This looks fun. A little bit skinzy. What are you? This literally look like looks like peach juice, and like th this this particular style of wine got me excited about wine in the first place. Super funky, like kind of like brined rock melon, kind of like but a little bit fermenty. It's got to be natty, doesn't it? It just has to be. Like this is the rules. If it's not clear, it's natural. I'd be really interested to try this out of a black glass, not knowing what color it is. 
It's like tropical and some weird like cheap perfume stank. See, this is this is why people get excited about wines that look like this, that maybe aren't James Halliday's cup of tea. They actually have something that evokes a feeling of nos like nostalgic and really exciting. And that's why people have gravitated to this style of wine. It's fun, it's interesting, it's different. Yeah, just like, hey, like really perfumed, really lifting out, like, and quite green as well. Like, I think this is a blend. It's not my favorite, sort of, but I've, I've got, I just said some shit that sounds like I'm really against natural wine. I really enjoy a bottle of wine that you've got to drink in half an hour because it encourages rapid consumption, which usually encourages conspiracy theory conversation, which is something I'm all about, but. All right, now number five. This is as black as the night is long. Really interesting. This is kind of similar to wine number two. Really spicy, lots of acidity. Wow, what the, that smells like seafood. What? Wow, oh fuck. This is so cool. Yeah, quite a brooding wine, really intense, like really green up front, some kind of like, like really, really crispy kind of red apples as well. And then on the palate, it's like black fruit. So this has definitely got some pretty serious whole bunch work. It's got this really spicy, savory character that's so like specific to this style of wine. And I've had it in lighter expressions, but this is particularly like darker brooding expression of it. Don't put this on pizza, it doesn't taste like anchovies. That is one of the most interesting smelling wines that I've come across and it doesn't it's not reflected in the taste. I really enjoy the flavour of it, but it doesn't smell like what it tastes like. Yeah, it's hot as well. Definitely Australian. Um, I'm thinking maybe $30 a bottle. I love, yeah, uh, 12 bottles for me, absolutely. It's a great thing to have like those two wines that we've just had side by side because that's one I just drink endlessly because of sheer fun, but this is a wine that I would drink endlessly for sheer like interest and delight and I really love this wine. Wine number six, yum. Like I was saying before with wine number four, if this was in a black glass, would I think it smells like strawberries? Maybe not. Do I think it smells like strawberries? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so this looks really conventional. I think this is like a McLean Falcon Grenache Rosé. Not the traditional strawberries and cream thing, a little bit more, a little bit more Provencal in its style. Um, but it's just like, yeah, super tingly. It's almost like having a fruit tingle, to be honest. Oh yeah. Wine of the line, give me 12. I'm gonna say something that's gonna sound offensive potentially to winemakers, but this tastes like cider, except I hate cider. Wait, that doesn't make, I really like this. It tastes like the good part of cider. Love the tannin, love the way it finishes. Love this really grippy, clean, fun, like Moorish, because now I'm just immediately, like my hand is like magnetized to the stem of just going like, oh. just pick up and refresh yourself. If this is under $40 a bottle, I will be shocked. So I'm gonna say 45. And if this is one of those ones that Lockie reveals that it's like $28 or whatever, don't bother going to Sometimes Always because I'm going to have bought them out of it. That is sick. I love it. Anyway, can't wait to see what the others say about it. They'll probably hate it. Great. Cool. So we've had another six. I'm sitting in the middle this time, which is going to be a disaster as it always is. It is. Uh, let's start out with wine number one. So with this one, I wrote tannin in white, question mark, and salty walnuts. Uh, I don't remember too much tannin. But no. salty walnuts is probably okay, but very like minor on the palate. Really, I, at the back of the palate yeah, is where really, I was getting that. Really, really on the back of the palate. But oh, yeah, I feel like there's a little bit of skin contact, but not too much. It's spicy. I know, it's like it's um that white pepper thing. Yeah, honestly, I was just up for me. I couldn't get past how high up all this was. Like, I, I love how hot these takes are. And it's a yeah. Unico white. No, what is it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a river scent. This is river uh, scent. What have what we, we got, got like, 60, 60 bucks. dollars. Fuck, yeah, $35. nah, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, I said, I said 30 dollars. Ah, it's Rhone Valley. I did say Rhone actually. Is this Shannon? This must be Shannon then. Fuck, I don't like this Shannon. No. Nah. It's not up my, oh no, it's, no, no, it's, is it sad? I actually had a bottle of this on Friday night. <laughs> so it's 100% Shannon Blanc. Uh, it is 14.5% yeah, alcohol. Yeah, it's fucking hot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Next one up. We got wine number two. So, what do we have here? I thought that, oh, okay. I thought this was a $28 Shiraz, apparently. What did you guys You're think? You're probably not far off the yeah. money, to be honest. What do we got, Locke? Oh, we're close. What Shock is it? and what horror. What did you guys think of it? Oh, well done. Is that Nebbiolo? Uh, duh, duh, duh. 
that's a lot of Italian. Dolcetto. Notes. That's Dolcetto. That's Dolcetto. Wow, so it's from the same place as Nebbiolo, so you're pretty pretty well done there. But it's not as quite as fruity as I generally expect from nah, Dolcetto. I think it's Dolcetto because I think that it's got real dry, like tan and drive and acid drive. Uh, <laughs> we've got wine number three. Give me a boatload. What do we got, Locke? Did you see Bucks? Closure. It's both. It's Morgan. It's Daniel Boulan. Oh yeah. So uh, 2020 Morgan. I honestly, I reckon this needs a little bit of time yeah. and bottle. But uh, I think I, I say I still thought it was really tasty. It's not the best Bojo I've ever had, but it's pretty good. Why don't you say that? <laughs> Natural apricots. How are we feeling about it? I loved that one. What are we talking about? What do we got? Twenty six dollars. Wow! I said I thought it was gonna be like forty bucks, and I'm all over that. That's the douche. La douche! <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's too good. He's just yelling douche. Oh, I really like that label. I'm confused by what that is. Yeah, have a look. What do you think, so? Yeah, so we love this producer, Kahiru Maru. He makes wine in Queensland and also in Victoria. Yeah, so Whitlands Whitlands. and Granite Belt slash yeah. Stanthorpe. And the name had me. La douche Tropical. That's fine. Is it La douche Tropical? Yeah, 100% uh, Videlo from the Granite Belt of Queensland. You can't really beat that in Queensland. That's top shelf. Orange juice from Queensland. Fine, mm -hmm. we're talking about wine number five. I thought this smelled like seafood. I thought oh, that might- seafood. Yeah. I was really hot on it. I was really- Like you mean really... like a red wine kind of base sauce maybe? No, I said that? anchovies. <laughs> I- you... Oh! Yes. Yes! yes! There isn't- Um, what did we have, Luck? 45. Nice. Oh. Wasn't far off. Oh my god, that's so sick. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so sick. So, like, we, wow, I think we, that cold producer. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you're right, it was like, great producer, but you know what's great about this, we tried this wine, I think, in a different vintage, probably months ago, like, yeah. episode four or something like that, and we did not like it at all, we all set a glass maximum, and we've all come back and said, this is like, well, me and Henry have gone, this is fucking red That wine. is really I loved it. By so, my standards as well, this is, like, the, my best wine, I think, that we tried today, like. For me, yeah, this was the, probably the best made wine of the lineup. Now, now finally, we've got this little, Chardonnay slash rosé number, depending on which way you go with it. I think it might be rosé, which is a bit untraditional for me because I'm usually a Chardonnay drinker. But I was all about this wine. Of course you were. <laughs> <laughs> We've roped you in. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Where do we go? Oh, let's go. Unlucky people, you're not going to get any of it. Oh, it's Austrian uh, rosé. Uh, That's it. Grab it. Grab it. What is this? Bergenland. Right? Pit now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cool. We've had some Pit now rosé, but this is on the cheaper end. Uh, and it is 12%. Yeah, 12% right. made from probably a bunch of different varieties. Again, 750 mils, controversial Possibly choice from the Zweigeld. wine maker. Probably yeah. Zweigeld, um, Saint Laurent, yeah. um, Blau Frankish, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's a winner. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us again. Um, as we've established, I don't have any taste in wine, but these ones are delicious. So, so thanks. So good. Yeah. It was good. See you next time. Ciao. Bye. Bye.